loss of boiler flame or a boiler explosion are unusual conditions that threaten the safety and well-being of the plant and the people working in it. Fortunately, these situations are rare occurrences and can usually be avoided by following plant procedures. Not so rare, however, are problems with auxiliary systems. To operate properly, a boiler requires the use of a number of auxiliary systems and components to keep it supplied with fuel, air, and water, to circulate water and steam, and to remove the products of combustion. Boiler auxiliaries are generally mechanical devices that will occasionally malfunction and fail. If this happens, the operator must identify the problem, take appropriate action to stabilize the boiler, and return the boiler to normal operation as quickly as prevailing conditions allow. In this part of the program, we're going to look at how an operator deals with the loss of boiler auxiliaries. The equipment that we'll cover includes induced draft and forced draft fans, air preheaters, boiler water circulating pumps, and boiler feed pumps. In general, the auxiliaries that we've mentioned are arranged in pairs, such as these boiler water circulating pumps. Each component in the pair is capable of handling at least 50% of the normal load. To ensure that a reliable supply of steam is available for the production of electricity, an operator must know the capacity of the unit when everything is operating properly and its capacity if one or more of the auxiliaries fail. An operator must also know how to recognize and identify the failed component and the proper procedures for stabilizing the unit and returning it to normal or reduced load operation. We'll begin this part of the program by looking at the loss of FD and ID fans. Force draft fans supply air to the boiler under a positive pressure. On a balanced draft boiler, like the one shown here, induced draft fans are also used to draw air and flue gas through the boiler keeping the furnace under a slight negative pressure. Both FD and ID fans are motor-driven. If these motors fail, the fans won't work. Likewise, if the damper controller or other fan components break, the operator may lose the ability to control the flow of air through the boiler or to remove the products of combustion. Both of these situations can eventually lead to a loss of flame. There are a number of indications that can alert an operator to problems with the FD and ID fans. If the drive motor is the source of the trouble, the amp meter indicator on the control panel will show a loss of motor amps, and the draft gauges will indicate a decrease in the boiler pressure. If the problem is associated with the damper controller, the operator will not be able to control air or gas flow through the boiler. This will also be indicated on draft gauges. If something inside the fan is broken, the operator will usually be able to hear a clanking or a rubbing noise coming from the fan. In addition to these indications, annunciator alarms may also sound to help the operator identify the source of the fan problem. If one fan fails, the operator must take appropriate action to stabilize the unit. For example, on a balanced draft boiler, the loss of one of the ID fans will tend to make the furnace go positive. This is because the forced draft fans are pushing air into the boiler at a greater rate than the remaining induced draft fan can draw air out of the boiler. Under these conditions, the boiler can continue to operate if the load on the unit is reduced. Most procedures will require that the operator isolate the defective fan and immediately reduce the flow rate of fuel and air to rates which can be handled by one ID fan. This means that steam flow, feed water flow, and condensate flow must also be reduced. Once the load on the unit has been reduced and stabilized, the operator should immediately inform the shift supervisor and load dispatcher. If conditions allow, the operator should then try to return the unit to normal operation. On rare occasions, the operator may lose both FD or ID fans. When this happens, the operator has little or no control over the flow of air and gas through the boiler. In this situation, the boiler cannot continue to operate. Most boilers have interlock systems that will automatically cut off fuel flow to the boiler and extinguish the boiler flame if both FD or ID fans are lost. If this is the case, the operator must immediately follow plant procedures for purging the boiler of all combustibles. If a fan cannot be returned to normal operation quickly, then the operator may also have to trip the turbine. Similar action is required to deal with the loss of air preheaters. Most boilers have two air preheaters which are used to increase the temperature of combustion air before directing it to the boiler. The symptoms of air preheater failure include a decrease in the air temperature, leaving the air preheater, and an increase in the flue gas temperature, leaving the boiler. 
In coal burning plants, the loss of an air preheater may make it impossible for the pulverizers to dry and grind the coal. However, it may be possible to continue to operate the boiler at a reduced load. If both air preheaters fail, the boiler will have to be shut down immediately. In our discussion of FD and ID fans and air preheaters, all the fans and preheaters had to be operating for the unit to operate at full load. The loss of one of the components leaves the operator with an either-or situation. Either reduce load and continue operating, or shut down the unit. In the case of boiler water circulating pumps or boiler feed pumps, the situation may be different. As this illustration of boiler water circulating pumps shows, there may be an extra pump available for backup purposes. Backup or redundant pumps can be put into service in the event that one of the other pumps malfunctions. If your plant has redundant pumps, then in the event of a loss of boiler water circulating pump or a boiler feed pump, starting the appropriate redundant pump will usually solve the problem. However, if your unit does not have redundant pumps and a pump fails, you're back to an either-or situation. Depending on the severity of the problem, an operator either reduces the load on the boiler or shuts the unit down. The loss of a boiler water circulating pump will affect the circulation of water and steam through the boiler. This will be indicated in the control room by both enunciator alarms and a change in the differential pressure between the inlet and outlet headers of the pumps. The loss of a boiler feed pump will cause a sudden drop in feed water flow and drum level. If all the boiler water circulating pumps or boiler feed pumps fail and can't be restarted, the boiler must be shut down and the turbine tripped. The thing to remember about the loss of a boiler auxiliary is that in most cases, you can continue to operate at a reduced load. Your job is to identify the problem, isolate the failed component if possible, and take immediate action to stabilize the boiler. In most cases, this means that you can reduce the load on the unit so that you can continue to operate. You then take whatever action is necessary to return the unit to normal operation as quickly as procedures and circumstances will allow. Take some time now to read over the material in your text on the loss of boiler auxiliaries and answer the questions. Ask your instructor to help you if you have any problems.